All right. That's so. Yes, thank God. Okay. So, the the cause. I'm sorry. I'm the cause. The projector is messed up. Um, this is about more or less hidden cross-site scripting um, in the mobile and desktop. Uh, not projectors, unfortunately, but applications. Um, so yay, 10 a.m., XSS, Woot, that type of XSS, definitely, XSS. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm this guy. Uh, I've spoken at Turacon, uh, Black Hat, B-Sides, and DEF CON, and all that jazz. I'm a red teamer, um, a pen tester. Um, I was once called the Jack Bauer of the cyber age, um, but also my friends called me a baby face, and they created this nice picture of Jack Bauer with a baby face. Um, I thought you should all see that. <clears throat> all right then. So, wait, is that not, is this, I don't even, XSS within the browser. So XSS is usually a uh, website individual application Application. My AV is great. Your AV is not great. And he has a derby. I don't. Anyway, so so it's usually uh, application specific within the browser. If you're at Google.com and you have XSS on Google.com. It's only good for Google.com. It's it doesn't reach across different applications. It doesn't um, it doesn't really. I mean, while XSS at Google.com is great, it's it's limited to Google.com. Um, it, it's it's you know user specific also. It's uh, a lot of times it can be. Uh, uh, that actual bit of XSS can be specific to that browser because they all have different rendering engines. Either it's Trident or WebKit or um, Mozilla Firefox, whatever the hell they use. I forget. All right, but and, and then we have the XSS here. Oh, God, I have two th options. So this is the definition from uh, O'Reilly's Ruby uh, glossary for XSS, and I actually kind of like it. Um, despite the use of crackers instead of hackers. Uh, Cross-site scripting is a security hazard that allows programmers to interfe interfere with your program's logic. Um, it's, it's not saying specifically your web browser or any of that. It's, it's your program's logic. You, you inject JavaScript and all that jazz. Um, but that's not limited to your browser at all. So we are just going to get, gotta keep doing, get rid of these guys. None of them, none of that. Shit. All right, so, I mean, if I'm not in a browser, what's really a big deal, right? Like, there's no logged in session. I mean, there's a logged in session, but it's probably not being handled by cookies. It's probably being handled by the, the actual binary program itself uh, in, in the application. It's not, it's probably not really a big deal. I mean, even if I do do that, I can get, you know, maybe a phishing page or an alert box or something, like, not all that great, right? Um, or I could inject my Google ads and profit off of your friend's discussion and all that. Not all that amazing. However, that's not completely true. So, it turns out JavaScript has this cool little ajax -y feature called XHR requests, XML HTTP requests. This basically allows you to query um, you know, HTTP pages or other pages. So, so if you're using JavaScript, you can stay within a page, and you can have this kind of nice user uh, flow of applications going out, grabbing the data, and you know, pulling it back in, and doing something with that without actually having to reload the page. Like Gmail does it. Every page does it. Um, however, file colon slash slash in some in, in some cases is not blocked. Um, in, in modern web browsers, it will be because uh, of something which I didn't include up there called cores. Uh, cross origin, does anybody know what it is? Because I'm, you would know. 
I don't even remember. Fuck. Uh, cross origin request security or, or something like that. Basically, which defines um, uh, when you're actually making the request, it checks the protocol, the host name, and the port. Uh, if none of those match up, if they don't all match up, I'm sorry, then it d you know does not allow you to make that request. So if you're on Google.com and it's trying to make a request to file colon slash slash, it's gonna completely be like no. However, um, in certain cases, as I'm gonna demonstrate, it does actually allow you to do this. Um, thus far, WebKit is the only um, the the only rendering engine that I've seen that allows you to do this. Um, WebKit includes Safari, most of the mobile browsers. Um, it actually it includes includes Chrome, but Chrome is not vulnerable because uh, Google actually prevents you from making these. Even if you're in file colon slash slash, you can't make XHR requests, um, which presumably might break things if you have some desktop application that uses it, but I mean, who's ever seen that? So like I said, OS X, iOS, Android, um, except for Chrome. All right, so I'm gonna jump right into it, and hopefully this demo works just dandy. Um, I did this demo actually a few months back at a, a, a TourCon Seattle. Um, there's a, a vulnerability in Skype a few, back in uh, April, I think, where you could inject JavaScript arbitrarily into the application. Um, the the original discoverer or, or one of the guys that found it after the guy found it didn't really do a whole lot with it. Um, the guy was they they pretty much just did a, a phishing attack or or just iframe injection or, or and all that jazz. But I looked at it and I was like, you know, this would be really cool if you could do more because it, it seems like you should. You're in such a, a weird area. You, you you're kind of in this about blank area in in a browser, but it's it's literally like null space. It's it, it's a very bizarre area, um, and it turns out it's actually vulnerable. Um, so you, you're actually able to inject JavaScript with uh, 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 some script to arbitrarily pull down files from the file system by doing file colon slash slash. And I'm going to zoom through some of the uh, demo slides, and then I'm actually going to go back, and we're going to we're going to actually demonstrate these vulnerable applications. Um, I have a little tool that I've been writing um, that hopefully will work, um, and uh, it it'll assist us in actually identifying the application that was vulnerable, identifying the operating system, and it'll go through and it'll pull down important files to that operating system. So uh, we'll go immediately. So it, it's demo one in a little bit will be Skype. And, and those versions are the ones that's vulnerable. It was fixed uh, about three, four months ago, um, pretty quickly after it was discovered. Um, you can go there for some more information. I have more screenshots and, and examples, uh, cause.io slash Skype. We'll go to number two. Number two is actually ADM in OS X. How many of you use OS X? How many of you use ADM? How many of you updated the last time around? <laughs> so this is actually um, the 1.4.2 is um, the version immediately behind the latest update. So 1.4.3 has the fix. If you're running 1.4.2, you should upgrade because this is the, pretty much the same exact thing as Skype. It, it's pretty much direct HTML and JavaScript injection allowing me to query files from your file system. It's pretty rad. So now let's get on to some more fun stuff. Instead of OS X, let's go for your iPhone. So Skype on the, again, I mean, I kind of feel bad about keep, uh, picking on Skype. And, and this was actually discovered by my coworker, uh, Phil. We, uh, we found it while we were playing with the original Skype on OS X. And uh, we're playing with Skype on OS X, and, and he looks down on his phone because he was logged into Skype on his phone. And he looks down and he goes, oh shit, I just got a alert box. So, so we, as soon as we figured that out, we, I mean, there's cross-site scripting on Skype on o iOS, which is, is, you know, fixed and great and dandy now. They actually put a fix out three or four days ago. Um, 
But this is on your mobile application. We don't have to guess what user is. We know where all the files are on the file system uh, that we can access, and it's it's super simple. Um, let's see if I can do this. All right, I'm gonna try to bring up um, VMware and demo two of those on OS X, and then I'll try to bring up my camera to demo it on the iPad thing. <coughs> Oops. Cool. Man. I didn't want to do that. All right, so um, right here I'm actually running the old versions of Skype. Um, let's see if I can do this without dying. So Skype. I'll pull up Skype on my machine. And is anybody friends with me on Skype? You can message me some, you know, stuff that'll steal all my SSH keys. Oh man. Uh, I lost my mouse. There we go. There we go. I'm sorry guys. So. All right, so this, this, this version of Skype is a few months old. Um, it's not too bad. Oh, shh. What the hell? <laughs> Full screen. Why do you not do that? Ooh. Great. All right, so here we have Skype, like I said, a few months old, and it's... Not connecting us, which is beautiful. Yeah, this calls a message. So for for demo purposes, because I for some retarded reason can't get online, um, it's as simple as this. So say say I'm an attacker and I'm trying to own this phone number. Um, so the, the cross-site scripting vulnerability is, I, I mean, I don't know if all you can see this, but so it's, it's a URL, and then you put in a double quote, then you close it with a close bracket, and then you open it back up with HTML. So if we do this, suddenly you don't have JavaScript. Where do you go? So this is a little restricting. You had to make up for the spaces. So yeah. Anyway, so there's an iframe with Google inside of it, like nothing fancy. However, if you put things inside of it like JavaScript source or source JavaScript, you can actually, uh, I mean, it's kind of silly. However, you've got JavaScript and all that jazz, which, which as my old slide show, my other slide, well, actually, allow me to go out, and if I can get my internet working and all that, I'll make sure that we do the demo properly with the uh, tool that I've written. Anyway, so quickly. All right, now another uh, OS that I'm going to go over is uh, Challenger Approaches WebOS. So WebOS, I mean, ha how many of you bought touchpads as soon as they went on fire sale? I mean, a few people. I bought like four of them. Um, and then two of my two of them got canceled, so I actually had two touchpads at one point in time. They're actually really great. They have like a full Linux environment underneath, so if you throw it in a dev mode and you get root shell, it's literally you install Ruby and then you throw on Metasploit and it runs beautifully. Like it's there's the libraries are all there. It's it's not like Android who is pretty much like super cut down and slim. It's it's a full Linux install. It's it's really nice. Um, anyway, so the UI and pretty much most of it is fully web driven, right? It's, I mean, it is web OS. It, it is truly one of the, I mean, opposed uh, to iOS and Android, it is very web driven. Um, 
uh, e easy application development, and uh, it's it was supposed to compete with iOS and Android. Um, so when I was actually putting together this talk originally and putting together this idea, my goal was to mostly beat up on these guys, um, and then. I, I, for work, I decided to get a, a, a WebOS phone because I was like, oh, this is great. I don't have a WebOS device. I've used the emulator, but I want a WebOS phone so I could hack at it, you know? <laughs> Literally the next day after I got the phone, fucking HP was like, yo, dogs, bye. Like, we're not touching this stuff anymore. Too bad. They killed freaking WebOS the day after I got a phone to do all my research, and my original plan for this talk was just, you know, whatever, almost rendered obsolete. The only thing saving us is that, or saving me rather, um, is that tons of people bought this stuff, so there's a huge market right now for writing exploits for this thing because so many people bought them, so I'm gonna do that. Anyway, so WebOS, and then it's all like, bye. Um, so, it, uh, it's maybe bad taste, who cares? Um, so most of the apps are HTML and JavaScript because it is WebOS. Like the whole UI is HTML and JavaScript. It's a giant tablet web browser in your hands. The UI is very nice. It's you know pretty and all that. However, because it's mostly HTML and JavaScript, a lot of the stuff, uh, the filtering has to be done client side. A lot of the, the uh, JavaScript filtering has to be done client side and all that jazz. And I don't know if what is this? I've got internet. Thank you. Because uh, I don't know how many of you see, uh, saw my talk at Google, or not Google, at um, Black Hat or, or DEF CON or B-Sides about hacking Google Chrome OS. Anybody see that? Oh, that was great. Anyway, so at uh, DEF CON, uh, I did a talk called Hacking Google Chrome OS, and that was basically injecting or owning Google Chrome extensions, um, kind of in the same way that we're doing here, um, except, like I said, Chrome is not susceptible to the file clone slash slash, but all that stuff is running client side, so not only are you owning uh, uh, applications, it, it's very, it's, it's outside of the developer's mindset on how to actually fix this because developers um, for you know JavaScript and HTML and websites are, are generally uh, fixing it server side. It's, it's not really a client side problem. Um, I mean, it is in this case, but for the most part, they're trained to believe that it's a server side problem in that you, know, you, you fix it on the server. You filter stuff out with your PHP, your ASP, or whatever. You just have a blacklist or whatever. In this case, you can't do this because everything's client side. So. I mean, sure, your, your attacks are being sent to a server, but in this case, it's not the server's job to filter that stuff out. The, the client is actually just taking whatever it has and spits it back out on, on the page in the individual apps. So you kind of had this problem where um, if you can get HTML injection, uh, it's, I mean, you, you're pretty much boundless. There, there's nothing being in, filtered at all. So anyway. Uh, because it's yeah very susceptible. Um, yeah, so actually WebOS, funny enough, even though it is all HTML and JavaScript and WebKit, it also does not allow file colon slash slash. Um, and there are a few instances where uh, you can get HTML and like emails. Um, even though emails have you know HTML emails and all that, you can get iframes, you can get tags, you can get all sorts of stuff in. Even though you can get that in, they've actually gone in and disabled JavaScript in, in certain instances, which is more than I can say for my next demo, which is great. Um, so it's it's actually in in this case you're actually attacking uh, attacking um, application specific vulnerabilities. You're you're attacking individual applications. You're not able to pull down files from OS X or your iPhone because you can't do file colon slash slash. Now it's possible that there's some API or something in Web um, uh, not WebKit uh, Web OS that I haven't yet stumbled upon, um, but it's it's uh, definitely not immediately obvious. So demo five. 
Android. Now this was uh, un this is actually unpatched right now, I believe. I just got an email from Google talking about this. Um, I reported it a few months ago. Uh, it's it's actually I I need to update that. It's no longer more complex. It's pretty easy. There is a, a chain command which we can do, or a, a chain attack which we can do, which is a little bit more complex. But I'm just going to go ahead and do the Gmail app. So Gmail has some um, undisclosed XSS. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. It was disclosed, but it wasn't publicly disclosed until now. Um, basically, the what is it? Is the from header is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. You you inject some HTML into the from header of an email, and it you know is totally cool. Um, I think the email RSC states that you can't have certain characters in your from uh, header in, in emails. So depending on the client, it'll complain. So you either need to you know roll your own stuff, or or in my case, I've actually been using um, maps.google.com because it doesn't complain. So I email myself the payload via maps.google.com. Anyway. So I, I'm gonna pull up the uh, little webcam I have here and try to demo this. But so so it's it's basically the same as all the others. Um, I mean, all this stuff is pretty much the same. The only difference is the the application that you're attacking and the the operating system. But again, it works across iOS, OS X, and uh, Android. Uh, I'm I'm sure there are Linux vulnerabilities and Windows vulnerabilities. Uh, I just haven't found any applications that currently have cross-site scripting or in the past that did. Um, there is a, uh, a nice little uh, screenshot online um, about, uh, uh, what is it, Zen Studio? Do you guys know Zen Studio? It's um, a PHP application that lets you code and, and it's heavily integrated with PHP so you can actually hit like a, a preview and it'll render the page along with the PHP client side so you can write PHP code client side and not have a server to test against. It's it's uh, pretty pretty all right. So there is this vulnerability. Let's see if I can, I don't even, I can't find it. Anyway, so, so it, it used to be if you put an XSS into uh, Zen Studio, um, uh, it would actually render because if you you know you're programming it, you want to see what it does, so you want to see it actually pop. In Windows, uh, if you're at file colon slash slash like uh, like this application is, because it saves it to a file temporarily and then opens it in a mini web browser, you're in trusted uh, what was it? It was like trusted internet zone or something. So suddenly you can run things like I don't know. ActiveX content without prompting the user. Uh, so if you actually, <clears throat> if I were actually able to get any of these vulnerabilities in Windows, it could potentially be like really bad. You know, file inclusion is great, but being able to pop shell in your box without prompting you because of an ActiveX plugin in a sh uh, trusted internet space, it's even better. But I, as I said, I wasn't able to, to actually grab that. I haven't found any. So, where am I at? I'm gonna go ahead and try the video. I'm sorry, uh, I have another slide. Cool, so, oh this is, so like I said, it's a, it's a two-part attack, it can be a two-part attack. So there is cross-site scripting in the Gmail app, but it also gives you the ability to download HTML files. Now when you download HTML files, you can open those up in your browser and you're at file colon slash slash, which according to the JavaScript HTML spec allows you access to pretty much everything under file colon slash slash. Um, so in this case, the neat thing is that because you're running in different instances, uh, so if you run it in Gmail, you're running as a Gmail user. If you're running in the browser, you're running as a browser user. Um, a, a lot of Android phones, a lot of people use the Dolphin web browser, browser which is pretty common. Um, you're in that because they all use individual uh, users per those applications that whenever you install it creates a user and installs it. Um, this is great because you know if I'm a Gmail app I can't access my browser history. If I'm browser app I can't access my Gmail. It, can, it should be like that. So there was a about a year ago, I was a little disappointed to discover this. Um, about a year ago someone actually figured this out 
but the way they did it is that uh, they force downloaded an HTML file. So you go to their website. It doesn't prompt you, it just downloads the file. So Forrest downloads the HTML file, and then um, from my understanding what I saw in the video, it looked like they spawned an iframe pointing to file colon slash slash HTML file. Uh, and then from there they exfiltrated f data that way. Well, Google went ahead and patched that, and basically made it so you can't, you can't from a web page, navigate to file colon slash slash. So from a, a 302 redirect to a JavaScript refresh, you can't navigate to a file colon slash slash unless you go there manually. However, in the Gmail application, you can force spawn a browser that goes to the file colon slash slash directory with this vulnerability, with this, with this uh, XSS vulnerability that I'm about to disclose right here. Um, and this is great because, all right, no, so so not only can I inject JavaScript into your H, your you know Gmail application, I can force you to download a file, and then from that f forcing you to download a file, I can force you to open it inside your browser and navigate directly to that file. So not only do I have the the data uh, that the Gmail app has permission to, I have your web history, I have your cookies, I have all that because I forced you to open up a web browser. Um, I think that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna um, try to do some of these demos right now. Uh, hopefully this works great. <clears throat> Yeah, for, it looks like I'm not actually getting signed online, which is not, no bueno, which is not cool at all. Um, let's see. What the f My mouse keeps disappearing. There it is. Alright, so the other one, like I mentioned, ADM. We're going to try to fire this up and hopefully that this gets in there. Um, if it doesn't load, I'm sorry guys. Uh, maybe. Oh cool, it did load. Yeah. Alright, so is that me? Yeah, that is me. So I'm gonna load up uh, Pigeon from my, uh, my laptop right here. Message error. That's not good. There we go. Cool. Hello. Alright, so uh, the vulnerability in this, and I actually, I have to give um, credit. I didn't actually find this vulnerability, um, or the Skype one. Um, the Skype on iOS and this vulnerability were actually found by a dude named uh, Noptrix. Uh, if you can, I'll just spell his name out on there. Noptrix. N-O-P-T-R-I-X. Um, he's on Twitter. He, he randomly found like a bunch of XSS vulnerabilities in a bunch of applications. Um, and for the most part, he kind of did what the other guy did where he was just like, oh look, XSS, okay, I'm done, move on. Um, I actually went back and I looked at it to make sure that it wasn't, you know, just an alert box. Um, it, it, like I said, it turned out to be follow clone slash slash. And there could be other things I'm looking over, but I have to give credit to this guy because he did find the two vulnerabilities um, that I'm showing you right now. So, this guy actually, let's see, send file. <clears throat> he discovered that when you send a file, um, the, the uh, application doesn't properly encode the uh, username. Or, I'm sorry, not the username, the, the file name. So you can do things like this. Oh wow, cannot send a file of zero bytes. Like. Those all have zero bytes. Holy hell. I'm sorry guys, I thought I had this uh, properly set up here. Two on JavaScript. Not really. So 
So also, uh, Linux is very hard to use when um, when you're in a command line browser. I have so I'm sorry, command uh, with special characters. I have like a million re uh, escapes in my line because there are so many special characters. So if we go down, this should be a good four bytes. So we can go ahead and you can't tell really, unfortunately, because the iframe is in the background. Um, but an iframe is rendered in the background, and basically, it's as simple as pulling in an iframe with the JavaScript source. I source in my own uh, little web page with this uh, vulnerability, and I, from here, if I can um, SSH into my server, I'll pull down. Um, let's see. Uh, from here, it's actually going to be exfiltrating data. So, so what my script does that I'm going to be uh, showing you guys or releasing and all that jazz. It actually goes through, it discovers which operating system it is by using browser or WebKit and, um, uh, like, you know, refer information and user agent information, pulls that stuff down. It identifies against kind of a list of files that are in the application and are uh, in that uh, uh, operating system. Uh, depending on the operating system, Web uh, Android and iOS aren't user multi-user, so you don't really have to worry about different user files and different home directories. In uh, OS X, you actually do have to worry about that. So it goes out. It find, there's a, a specific file that I go out and grab, and I parse out the username from it, so I know which user is currently logged in. From there, I um, I uh, actually then just have a list of files that I go out and query. I mean, I I have like .ssh. I have um, uh, .ssh slash uh, id dat underscore rsa for your ssh key known host so I know which host you're logging into. Uh, I can go through and I could grab your Firefox cookies. I can grab your keychain and then brute force that offline. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty much endless in what you can think of as far as post exploitation with a specific user uh, privilege. Um, so, this is so slow. So if we go to darn, none of those worked. All right. Anyway, so I'm sorry. So the, my script or that query that inject is wrong, but um, basically, uh, as I said, I'll show you the script in a second. I'll walk through it and all that. But it, it basically just has a few functions, like I mentioned. It identifies the OS. It figures out which user you are. It goes through the files available, and then it just starts exfiltrating those files to my server like mad. Um, and it's really simple because, like the ex, uh, file colon slash slash, I just make an XHR request, uh, XML HTTP request to my server, and you know, blast my server with it, and you know, as fast as you can upload your cookie database, I have it. All right, what else do I? You're gonna demo. All right, so I'm actually <laughs> really, really going to tempt the demo gods here. Um, so I couldn't figure out how to uh, really properly demonstrate the Android, or uh, I was actually gonna sh show you the iOS bug if we can, um, Skype, or the WebOS bug, because I'm, I'm not an Andro or Apple developer, so the, uh, I don't have the iOS image, um, uh, iPad image on my laptop. Uh, WebOS is the only one that actually emulates nice with everything. Uh, Android has some, I mean, it, it doesn't come with a Gmail app if you emulate it, so it's of no use to me whatsoever. But I figured instead I would purchase a webcam. Uh, so if we play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we. That's later. This, oh. Yeah, there we go. All right, this is actually a really nice webcam. I was surprised. All right, so I'm going to attempt to do this. Um, so pardon the uh, sketchiness of it. All right, so uh, first of all, let's see if I can pull out Skype. Um, I can't demonstrate this right now because I was doing some testing on it and I actually kind of broke Skype on the iPad. Um, so I ended up jailbreaking it to, to figure out um, 
you know, what I could access. Because you're, you're running as a user that has restrictive access to the file system. You don't, you don't have access to everything, but I wanted to go in and I wanted to find out what you have access to. So, um, uh, I'll, I'll show you this real quick. It's not actually going to pop or anything. However, it does have, uh, oh, did it delete the file? Delete the chat? Looks like it deleted the chat. Let's, let's see if I'm actually logged in still. Um, so, so it, it, I'm not, I can't actually show you the exploit at the moment. Um, it, uh, I can show you the vulnerability. Um, but it's it's pretty pretty sweet. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and is it yes yes that works great. So I'm gonna go ahead and go hello. Hopefully this gets through. All right. That's not going through at all. That's not cool. Yeah, so it seems to be having some uh, connectivity issues because I'm definitely connected. Anyway, there we go. All right, so you see, you see this big like invisible box here. This is actually uh, an iframe <laughs> that's being injected in the username. This is straight up vanilla cross-site scripting inside of a username profile or a profile. So. I found out that if you actually just set your username to this, uh, a lot of people uh, don't accept video calls from people they don't know, but oftentimes it's set to, you know, allow anyone to message me as long as they know my username. Um, so, uh, like I said, I broke this and I'll explain why in just a second. Um, but with that, with that iframe in there, I'm simply able to load in some JavaScript, like just flat up just all right, inject the uh, the name or inject in the name and then source in a JavaScript file. Um, there's a, a text constraint, but that's not really, um, we had to do some JavaScript trickery, but that's not really part of it. Um, so anyway, so the reason this is broke is because I was testing out the limitations of this. Um, I was testing out, all right, what can I access? And then I decided, all right, well, I can access, you know, you, your address book, your a few other fancy things and all that. But then I realized, oh, you know, I'm going too far. Why would I attack any other application? Why don't I just attack Skype? Because Skype somehow has to store your credentials, right? Well, it does store your credentials, and it stores them in a nice little XML file. However, it is encrypted in some way. It's, it's a standard format for Skype across operating systems, which is also great. Because not only can I just grab those credentials, if I can't decrypt them or I you know, don't know how to, I can pop that credential blob into my own Skype instance, and then suddenly I log in as you. So we, it's, um, and on top of that, I can access file colon slash slash, you know, whatever, but uh, like I mentioned, my coworker, um, uh, Phil, uh, he, he pretty much did file colon slash slash your address book, and that was great. That actually hit the news. Did any of you see the iOS XSS um, uh, Skype cross-site scripting vulnerability? It was in like the registry and, or whatever the hell it's called, and and a bunch of other uh, websites. But uh, I, I kind of just wanted to make it more simple, and instead of going after your address book, I'm just going to go after Skype. So that way I can log in as you, I can you know spam your friends, I can use your Skype account for international phone calls, uh, and I can view uh, your Skype history. I believe it stores some of that server side. Um, but yeah, fun stuff. So there's that. I'm glad the video kind of worked. Alright, uh, so the really hard one. Um, because it's an Android phone and it's a small screen. So we're actually going to, oh, this is what's giving me internet too. It's gonna be bad. All right, so, so I mentioned uh, earlier, I mentioned the RFC spec, I believe specifically states you're not supposed to have certain characters. Um, 
but if you write, if you roll your own emailing script or you you know if you just netcat into a, mail, a relay and you send yourself an email or whatever you can inject them yourself I've been using uh, maps.google.com just because uh, it, it doesn't complain and I just wanted something that was close to Google so I could you know th there's you know quick email time oh shoot wrong side so like if we go in where are we at anyway what city is this Kentucky Which is. So if we want to share a city, oh wow, there are no landmarks here. <laughs> there we go. So if we want to share something, it's as simple as, you know, whatever, share. Send. So <clears throat> I can go ahead and inject a two. I fix this. So from here. It's a simple double or single tick, double quote, close bracket, and then I frame source, you know, whatever I want, JavaScript, uh, document. Uh, yeah, let's go to uh, document. Uh, okay. Oh wow, junk JavaScript writing. It's hard. <laughs> document. Dot location equals cat. All right, and that should work presumably. All right, so I'm gonna send that to myself. Check out this beach creek. All right, so I just sent myself an email. Um, We'll see, hopefully it pops up on my phone. Uh, let's go ahead and hide this. There we go, it's on my phone. All right, I'm gonna stand like this. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. This is much easier. All right, so hopefully, there you can see. All right, so that's my email. Uh, you know, airline check-in. There's the actual vulnerability. I actually did submit, so I submitted this vulnerability to Google about um, two months ago, and uh, it never got anywhere because originally I did not discover what you could do with it. I just saw HTML injection, and I was like, oh, that's great, you know. I could put a phishing page. So I submitted it as a bug without like a, a low security ranking, and it didn't get anywhere. Um, so earlier this week while I was writing this presentation, I went back and I looked at it. It turns out the bug that I found over two months ago has been really bad this whole time. Uh, and it's actually kind of a not great thing. So, let's see, I accidentally. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. I just have a few minutes left, so this is gonna be, so this is the email I sent. So, yeah. So you can see email and all that. And maybe they fix this. So, so actually, um, the vulnerability is uh, see in the username you have the the iframe and all that, uh, and then JavaScript location. Um, and let's say fixed it. Holy hell, they fixed it while I was up on stage. <laughs> Let me go back to an older one to see. Okay, cool. They did not fix an older email. Uh, it appears that they fixed uh, the maps.google. Um, that's what I was originally using. Uh, so this is an older one. So no Nyan cat for you. Um, so like I said, see how the HTML, so in, in the yellow one you saw there was a bunch of uh, encodings. It was, there were ampersamps and semicolons. That's, that's uh, HTML encoded, or entities. Uh, it's, a, it's a type of encoding for a web browser to display stuff. Anyway, so this one is not encoded at all. So as you can see, there's JavaScript. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm doing some JavaScript trickery, which at this moment doesn't really matter. It's just how I'm using it. Um, so if we go ahead and execute it. Oh, wrong one. Yeah. So you see that iframe right there? So basically what this is doing is, uh, I was supposed to replace that index file. Um, what this is doing is, um, 
because it loaded an iframe and I have JavaScript, it's basically at the moment exfiltrating my whole email database to my web server, um, publicly available, so if you guys wanna go look for it. But, but it's, it's going through, and, and that script I mentioned before is actually, uh, actually identified you know the web browser that accessed it de uh, demo uh, identified the uh, user and application that access it and uh, all that and I'm running out of time so I'm just gonna pull up this so I very quickly named it XSS pwn um, so basically your attacker you have a, a function list for Linux and Mac and Android depending on the application um, you have a file list, so here's just important files, like whatever, no big deal. It just simply goes through, it uh, identifies the operating system and the, uh, the uh, uh, you know, application, or, or I'm sorry, the uh, device, so Android, Linux, Macs, Windows, WebOS, and iPad, and all that. Um, and it then, you know, just goes through based on that list. So if you're an iPad or an Android device, I'm just gonna go through these files because you're not gonna have, you know, an SSH file within the home directory in, in Linux if you're in an iPad. Um, uh, so yeah, that's, that's all fancy and all that. Now, uh, I, I don't have, well, don't look at my history. I don't, <laughs> I don't have the demo, um, set up for the uh, file colon slash slash in the Android browser. Um, that uh, was a little bit trickier at the time that I was doing this and I decided just to do this. But because we're running out of time, it worked great. Uh, let's see. So basically, um, same sort of deal with, with you saw the, the iframe inside the Gmail. So if you're in Gmail and you actually include an iframe, if, if you do JavaScript, uh, window.open, it'll prompt you to download a file, or it'll prompt you to open up a browser. Depending, if you're on vanilla Android, it'll just open up the browser because there aren't multiple browsers, there's only one. Um, I have three apparently, so it prompts me every time. Um, if you download, if you're, if you're in a, uh, an email, everything in the email, that whole page is HTML. So all the uh, show images button or the download attachments buttons are all HTML and JavaScript. So if I have cross-site scripting in your email app, I can force you to download an attachment and then from that forced attachment download, I can then force you to open up the, a web page. And not only do I have your email database, I have your browser database, your, you know, uh, uh, cookies and history and all that jazz. Um, but uh, that's about it. I'm going to be kicked off the stage soon, mostly for debauchery and drunkenness. No, 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 we can't kick you off for drunkenness until you stop being drunk. <laughs> oh, well then I better get drunk again. <laughs> Alright, wait, oh, where's it at? Demo web OS, oh, HTML drop script, oh, owned, challenge defeated, uh, security kind of, because they don't allow file clone slash slash, demo five, which is the Android one, which I kind of showed you, but anyway, so force download, and XSS, fuck yeah. <laughs> That's all. Who wants a touchpad? I'm just joking.